John Matheson from Kaiser Permanente. Your function is Chief Health Information Officer um, and you're uh, setting net next steps in the personal health record. Right, and I think we have a huge opportunity uh, immediately ahead of us. As we're deploying open notes and sharing notes with our members, they're becoming much more engaged and satisfied with their care and much more trusting in the relationship. What is open notes? What is my notes? Open notes is where as soon as the doctor creates a note on a person's record, that it's released to the patient themselves so they have direct access and full transparency immediately to their health record. Our notes is where they can contribute to their own health record in a combined health record environment. And as we do that, we're finding that our members are much more satisfied with their care, much more trusting in their doctors, uh, and they have the opportunity to be much more engaged uh, and autonomous in managing their own health. Do, do they really use it already? Do they read it? Do they add notes themselves? Whether they use it or not, they have a great deal of satisfaction knowing that they have the opportunity to have transparency into their own health record. But in fact, they are using it and they are learning from it and they are having a much better idea about what is going on with their health. And if there are terms that the doctor used in the, in the exam room that they didn't understand, when they see them in their open note record, they can look it up on Google and they can figure out exactly what's going on. So next time they go in, they have a much higher level of fluency so they can have a much better dialogue, not just with their physician, but with their own personal support group that whether it's their family or their household or their social network that helps guide them through their health journey. So there's a lot of advantages. But the one thing that's, that's really interesting is the natural reaction of most physicians is to say, that's not their note, that's my note. That's, that's, that's a doctor's note. We can't give those to patients. They'll, they'll misinterpret things. They won't understand what I'm saying. They'll get upset at me. They'll sue me. And what do you say uh, to these doctors? What I say to these doctors is, we've been practicing evidence-based medicine for a long time now. We need to practice evidence-based digital medicine. And in fact, there are scores of papers published on how safe and effective Open Notes is. In fact, if Open Notes were a pill, it would be considered malpractice not to prescribe it to each of our members because it is so effective. And so you, you really do have strong evidence for that? The evidence is overwhelming that it's not only safe but highly effective. And it does affect the relation and the cooperation between the healthcare provider and the patients, isn't it? It depends upon the physician's attitude. We have many physicians who have said, you know, I'm paying much more attention to what I'm putting in my notes because they've become such a powerful communication tool and such a powerful motivational tool that my patients are following my instructions much more carefully. And again, there's research proving that point. So when physicians seize the opportunity to use a note, not just as a doctor's note, but as a note that is used to educate and motivate their, our members, their patients, to do the things that will improve their health outcomes, it's very, very powerful. So it depends a lot on the doctors. One of our oncologists has done a magnificent job of this, and she goes to uh, great pains to use it as an educational tool, and she's finding much better compliance with therapy and much better outcomes in her patients. And then you elaborated on some other uh, subjects in your talk. Could you uh, say something about that? I, I briefly mentioned uh, that blockchain, the technology underlying Bitcoin, um, is a really novel set of features. And it, it is the underlying technology for Bitcoin, but it is being used uh, in many fields outside of healthcare, outside of banking, outside of finance for a variety of reasons. There are a lot of projects emerging around the world, like scores and scores of projects uh, that are designed to restore more agency and autonomy to the individual to be able to manage their own health information. And uh, we're working on some stuff uh, with the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health right now to facilitate how individuals can safely contribute some of their personal health information where it can be managed securely and much more efficiently and with much less friction enable global research on specific disorders and diseases. We're starting off with uh, cancer, which is fundamentally a genetic disease, and using that as a method, working in concert with uh, David Hauser, UC Santa Cruz, and the Global Alliance for uh, Genomics and Health. And we're very excited about the prospects for how much more collaboration we can see, both between 
providers and patients, as well as with physicians around the world and researchers around the world to more safely and securely be able to share information uh, to better understand their health condition based on the combination of what we know about their health from traditional methods plus newer methods of genomics and microbiomics and proteomics and metabolomics. All of these things are, are relatively new fields, but they're all converging in what I call the healthcare plecosystem so that we can begin to apply all of this new knowledge to every individual and truly personalize what we recommend for them, what kind of options we give them, and uh, make that much more personalized for every single individual. And what does it mean for the individual? What effects will it have? What it means for the individual is that they will know that they are not receiving some formulaic approach to uh, if X then Y that will be looking much more broadly at the entire context of their illness. And we know that every, every person with diabetes is different than every other person with diabetes. So how we use this information will be that the, the regimen that we re might recommend for someone who seems to look just like another person with diabetes may be quite different based upon all of these other factors and sources of information that we have about them in the world of personalized medicine. So it really supports this personalized medicine for, for, for the best of the individual. Absolutely. The, the future is in personalized medicine. Thank you very much, John Madison. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it.